Welcome back to another episode in learning the Moog Model 15 iPad app. This time, let's focus on the controller input section. So if we look around, we have a simple um, sine wave hooked up to our voltage-controlled amplifier, which is hooked up to a envelope generator, which is flowing to the trunk line. Very similar to what we did in tutorial one. So let's play around with all the input in this section. So first off, we have this polyphonic switch. If we, um, if we play a key right now, polyphony is off. So if we turn polyphony on, then, uh, oops, let's turn off old. Then we can play a chord. And it just keeps adding notes to the, uh, to the, to the chord. If we turn polyphony off, then as we switch notes, it just drops the previous note, single note at a time. Pretty basic stuff. All right, we have a mod wheel on the, uh, turn down the volume a little bit. The mod wheel's not hooked up yet. There's a pitch wheel. which as you'd expect would change the pitch. We have right above the keys, we have this, this slider right here, which lets us move around between all the different keys in our virtual keyboard. We also have this glide knob right here. So if we turn that all the way up and then switch to a different key, you can see how it glides between the current and the previous sound. If we do that with polyphony on it, Gives us some really weird effect. Alright. So what else is there? So right here, there's this section of controls to oscillator and controls to... Um, envelopes. Um, these are on by default. You can turn them off and that basically, this automatically rigs up patch cables, invisible patch cables, um, to keep the patchwork simple for um, just learning. But if you turn these off, then nothing's going to play. Now you can manually do the patch cables yourself. Um, as far as I understand from reading the manual, if you, let's keep uh, the envelopes one on, if you want to do the oscillation controls to oscillator if you want to re-implement this, this red switch, what you do is you do a patch cable from the con pitch control volume to um, the frequency control of your oscillator, your 1921A oscillator, and now you can kind of control it as you heard before. Let's go down, make a little bit less, and yeah, right there. Now if I remove that cable, now I don't, I get basically get no pitch um, attenuation. You still hear a sound, but you don't get the pitch attenuation. If I turn this red switch back on, then you get the sound as normal. So that's the one where you get with the red cable. Now the blue cable, or the blue switch, that gives you, what that does is automatically hooks up this trigger right here to I believe these, um, these envelope generators. to basically make the envelope generators fire. And what that does is it controls the, it has a control input, and it's rigged to the trip control input of the voltage controlled amplifier. All right, so instead of, so we can actually move this um, purple cable around. Let's play around with that. Let's see if we can get it to do anything. Let's see, we'd have to go to a square wave, I believe, for this one. Pretty, pretty minor. Yeah, so if I jump in keys pretty far, you can hear it's changing, changing the width of the square wave. Let's see. Turn that down a bit. What else can we do? Let's put this back to frequency. 
Put it back to sine wave. Let's see, we can hook up the mod wheel to, let's say, DC modulate. See, now our mod wheel's active. So as I rotate the mod wheel, controlling that DC modulate. And here's the AC modulate. And of course you can just plug it into wherever you want, but I'm just showing examples of what stuff we already know. Velocity. I don't know if I'll be able to show off this one very well. Yeah, there was some weird way of inputting velocity by tapping the keyboard and releasing it in the correct spot. Let's see, after touch. Yeah, so what I'm doing here is I'm clicking a note and then sliding my finger up or down. And that's how you do after touch. So it almost like treats the key as like a guitar fret. So as I slide my finger up on the white note, it's altering the aftertouch, which in turn is going to the DC modulate on this in this example. All right, let's rig the uh, purple cable up to the ribbon and see if we can get the ribbon to work. I think we have to hook up the trigger there. I haven't played with the ribbon. Oh, that's the ribbon aux. Let's try the ribbon main. Let's make the uh, vo volume louder. Oops, too loud. So I'm tapping, so I'm basically tapping this white part with my finger and then tapping this part to make the pitch bend. And as I slide around that gray part, it does kind of like a basis fret thing. I don't know what this stuff is over here, this aux control. Let's see if we can read about that in the manual. Touch, playing the ribbon, touch the trigger strip in the middle to generate a sound. While holding the trigger strip, take another finger and slide it left to right in the ribbon itself. Yep. When multiple fingers are held in the ribbon, the finger furthest gets priority. Okay, no problem. I already figured that out. Switch one, two. Switch one position is the wide setting, providing the pitch range over 10 octaves. Switch two is the narrow setting, which provides 25% of the range available with setting one. Aux control. This slider provides a secondary, continuously variable voltage signal that's made available. All right. So you can hook up aux one say to the DC, the DC modulate. Let's see if we can get that working. So it doesn't seem to... S see as I slide the aux signal it's impacting the DC modulate there kind of like a weird mod wheel as far as I can tell and then I turned it off so it doesn't do anything 
Then I can set it to slide one. See, the switch goes from one to two. If I turn it to one, apparently the range on this thing is supposed to be longer. Yeah. So right now I have my finger in the middle. If I go to the far right, it's near zero. So there's the middle of the keyboard. And there's the far right of the keyboard. So it goes up pretty high. So that's the ribbon cable. Oops. pretty much everything in the controller outputs as well as these this little section right here that controls two. I think we kind of explored all of this. There's a velocity guy which I can't easily repro with a, without a MIDI keyboard. I think you can kind of emulate it by clicking somehow. There's also two trunk lines and there's power on and off. I think if you click this guy it just turns the power off to everything which is kind of obvious. Um, Apparently you can hook up two trunk lines. Let's see if we can do that real fast, because we never never did that. So let's hook up a sawtooth wave over here. And then this guy. Um, oops. This output here to this trunk line. And then this guy to here. So now you can hear left and right will be different. Because if you just hook up one trunk line, then it's a, mo it's, a, it's a mono signal to both ears, both left and right. If you hook up both trunk lines, then you get left and right signal being different. So now we have a sawtooth in one, one ear. Which is kind of neat. Let's see. I think that's about it for that section. Yeah, that's a good stopping point for the episode. We kind of explored all this section right here. And previous, previously, we've explored this section. As well as the ar arpeggiator. So we're making progress. Alright, see you next time.